Visiting Dean's Court, it's fascinating to see how each generation has adapted the fashions of the day to create a stylish and comfortable home. From the splendor of the Georgian period to the bold decoration of the Victorians and the colorful brushwork of the 1930s. This is the sort of classic 1930s. And now, William and Ali Hannum are reimagining Dean's Court with their own creative flair. When I married into the British aristocracy, it was the start of a wonderfully exciting journey. But it was also a little daunting. I became a Viscountess, and for an American girl from a small town outside Chicago, that was quite a shock. I live with my husband Luke, heir to the Earl of Sandwich, and our family at Mapperton House in Dorset. Mapperton is a glorious sandstone house dating originally from the 1540s. It is known as Britain's finest manor house, and it is full of wonderful treasures collected by Luke's ancestors. Living in a place like this is a joy, but also a challenge. And every day we're aware that we're preserving a very special part of Britain's heritage. Mapperton has opened up an extraordinary new world for me, and I can't wait to share it with you all. So if you love castles and manors, and stately homes as much as I do, please join me as I head off to visit some of Britain's most spectacular historic homes. On these trips, I'll be meeting other owners who manage these large houses and estates, as well as some of the fantastic people who work there too. With them, I'll be exploring the history, the landscapes, and the innovations of generations past and present. And I'm particularly keen to meet the remarkable women who, like me, have married into these families, bringing new ideas, energy, and more than a touch of style. I'll be sure to roll up my sleeves and help out with a few jobs along the way. Is there a snake in here? Yeah. What? What? So please join this American Viscountess as I journey into the British countryside in search of some of Britain's finest historic houses. Hi, Julie. Oh, I thought Welcome. I might find you here. Yeah, <laughs> to the morning room. Excuse the so, chaos. No, I love Excuse you know. Boxes. I've just done a little bit of walk around myself, and every room is so different. Very different. It, yeah. Which is wonderful, mm -hmm. and it's like you're walking back into into time in some of the rooms. You know, yeah. I've just gone from the library, Obviously, which is the room we've completely redone. redecorated. Yeah. But here. What, where am I walking into right now? So you're, what century? You're walking <laughs> into a bit of a mixture in here. You're walking into a room that was, the wallpaper goes back to 1868 and the painting is 1930s. It's the one room we're not really quite sure what to do. We absolutely love it. We've just taken the carpet up because ah. it was moth completely yeah. moth-ridden. Um, the, the original carpet that was put down in here. The painting, absolutely beautiful, but then you can see, look at the ceiling and the beautiful moulding. Yes. But it's, you know, if we just paint the ceiling, it would look ridiculous. You suddenly have this bright white ceiling, it would emphasise actually how grubby and stained the wallpaper is. But I am really noticing though, mm. so basically I'm in a room of 19th and 20th century, yeah. kind of a mix mm. match yes. of the two of the centuries. Yes. But what's extraordinary is just all of the painting. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. It, the detail. Yeah, so Cordelia, who came to the house, lived in the house from sort of 1900 to about 1948, and um, came with lots and lots of money after the 20s. She had lots of money and started redecorating. And she, in the 19, early 1930s, would have commissioned a, a decorator, but when sort of everyone was into painting and color and um, special effects with the paints and stippling, and that's exactly what these beautiful doors so she obviously decided to leave the wallpaper in here, which is absolutely beautiful, hand painted. So the, the wallpaper, the wallpaper is 
1868. 1868. Yeah. And in fact, this particular Fantastic. wall here in William's parents' area, I think it's in the 1980s, they had a big damp problem. So actually right. they sort of redid this and they cut out every single star that was original and put it onto new paper. You're kidding me. And they me. redid this corner. So they so were that, able to save the stars. Yes. They cut they them cut out. They cut them out and put them onto new wallpaper. New wallpaper. Because you can see that's slightly yeah, you can. whiter also than say the wallpaper over there. But and same with the border here. Same with the border, yeah. But you know, you can see, look at the deterioration there. But how do you salvage this wallpaper? Because surely that's something you want to do. Well, we would love to, but I don't. I don't know. I don't think. I don't know if we can. I mean, you can't take the whole all the wallpaper off and no. rehang it. I mean, no. I think we'll. I think we've got this far. We've got the carpet up. It has turned into rather a box room. We've got to sort this out, obviously, and we will work out how to sort of touch up the lovely, lovely moulding and redo the ceiling somehow. But what's fascinating about this room is obviously you've got the mixture between the two centuries kind of mashing together. You've got the wallpaper from the 19th century, but then this painting, this, this beautiful painting, yeah, that was very influenced by the Charleston era in the 1930s. Vanessa Bell, Virginia Woolf, John Fowler, they all sort of went, you know, they all congregated in the house in Sussex, Charleston, and were painting, painting these beautiful colours, experimenting with colours, experimenting with paints, and I think Cordelia was obviously very influenced and you can see it's absolutely beautiful. The, yeah. the colours, very, very Charleston, these colours, very 1930s. And, you know, we wouldn't want to change that at all no. because that is so beautiful. So she's, she's, you know, that was the period mm. that they would decorate on these sort of the Georgian yes. features yeah. that you would have yeah, in the house. the Georgians right. obviously would, this would just be completely plain. They <laughs> exactly. Did, they, they did not like too much colour, no. they liked it plain. Right. So it's fascinating that you've got such a mix. Cordelia's restyling of the interiors here also included commissioning the iconic Liberty Store in London to decorate some of the rooms. And then we go through into the next room. Oh, two doors into the next room. Oh, wonderful, those Georgians. Yeah, look, those Georgians. <laughs> the Georgians, the panelling, and, you know, a couple of doors. Yes. <gasps> into, oh, this is the wow. sort of classic 1930s. Yes. So you can't change this. No. No, no, the no, color no. is so amazing, <gasps> isn't it? Ooh, the color is so wonderful. Okay, ooh, this what's happening here? <laughs> this is a bit of embroidery. <gasps> this is fantastic. Yeah. What a lovely place I know, to do it. All right, so what are you? I'm, I'm totally intrigued right now. Okay, so um, basically, this is a lockdown hobby that sort of grew. Oh, um, it started as a lockdown hobby. It's embroidery, basically. It's all done by hand. Um, and I'm doing at the moment some little Christmas stockings that I'm doing for someone that has um, all their family's <gasps> initials on. How wonderful. So this lockdown project then became a full-time biz yeah. business. It was a total, um, <laughs> like kind of suddenly, because we were all here in lockdown and we had so much time, um, I just had a go and I literally learned by YouTube. By YouTube. YouTube. Well, we love YouTube. Yeah. So I started doing it. I then I basically this. set up a little Instagram account for it. This is brilliant. And then it just grew and <gasps> yeah, it kind Lovely. of. But I think it's fascinating also because you're doing what they did sort of a hundred years ago. Yeah, but this time you're exactly. creating, you're being a really mm. fast forward mm. um, um, businesswoman, which oh, is God, yeah. yeah, trying to be. Yeah. No, it's quite, yeah, it's been fantastic. And it's you're been. The, Lovely during yeah. lockdown actually to do it. And, and nice that this room's being used again because it was a bit of a museum, this room for the for the world. Of course. Since yeah. we've been here. No one really came in here. I think you're, I think what's extraordinary place. is you're taking this lovely craft that's been around, you know, for a long time. But you're, you've modernized it and making it into a business. So it's like this, mo I love it. Yeah. This mm. modern working mother. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Taking a craft and making a business out of it. Well also, yeah, that's what's quite nice. It's such a therapeutic kind of like old fashioned thing to do. But I literally couldn't do it, I've done it without technology. No. Couldn't, I wouldn't have sold anything without Instagram. And I wouldn't have learned how to do it without but YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. Mm. It's the meshing. Yeah. Just Amazing. like that room over there was yeah. meshed in the yeah. centuries, we've got the meshing yeah. here. Exactly. Uh, the same thing mm. happening, yeah. sort of 21st century with the 19th century, if you like. Yeah, exactly. No, and it's so exciting. Wonderful. And I feel now it's kind of like, God, I've found a new kind of, 
well, business that I can now do yeah. going forward with a baby and just way Great. Right. Well, I've got there. four children, and I might be contacting you and commissioning uh. you for something to do. Maybe four <laughs> stockings. Four stockings. Um, since we're coming up to that yeah. period. Anyway, I will leave you to your piece because I know how important <laughs> that is, especially when you have a four and a half month old. Lottie's business threads back to another creative woman who lived at Dean's Court. In the 19th century, Amy Hannum, who had been widowed when her husband, Captain John Hannum, was murdered, created beautiful embroidered furnishings. And not only for the house. Coming up in a future episode of American Viscountess, William shows me Amy Hannum's exquisite altar frontal in a side chapel in Wimborne Minster. So it took her 40 years. It took her 40 yeah. years. I hope you are having as much fun watching these episodes of American Viscountess as I am making them. It is so important to bring history to life and to celebrate these wonderful places. But we need your help as we rely entirely on the support of our patrons who help cover the costs of production. Please do join our community of supporters by becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash American Viscountess. Here you'll get early access to all the episodes as well as a lot of other behind the scenes benefits. I really look forward to seeing you there. Harking back to its monastic roots, Dean's Court is just a short walk from Winborn Minster and the historic market town. I mean, I love this. You can literally just walk into town. I mean, how extraordinary. I mean, it wouldn't be a complete walk without Buster. It wouldn't. I mean, so this is lovely, though, just walking yeah. through here. And then, yeah. you know, it, 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 it develops your sense of surprise. So rather than just having straight paths to yes. the town. No, no, exactly. Yeah. But was it always like this? No, this was. It was. A, there was a track you could just about fight your way through the laurel. We've extended it because this is where the wedding guests, when they arrive, come. Ah. So this is the entrance, just for you. Is that right? In one sense, this is like your in, private in entrance. In one sense, yes, exactly. But it wasn't always like this. This used to be uh, the, the vehicular, the, the car entrance to the house, and ah. then we followed an avenue of chestnuts, which is still there, and then came out to look at the corner of the house. You know, I was mentioning that Georgian. Right. trick of having two sides of the house to look exactly. at. There's a story behind this. There was trouble. <laughs> there was trouble. There was trouble, yes. <laughs> trouble, trouble. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I see, so they, they used, the two crests used to be up here. Yeah. And these walls were filled in. And these walls were filled yeah. in. Yeah. Okay. So what happened was um, in 1930, there was a big fight with the town over the ownership of the lane. The, t the council came and laid tarmac down <gasps> and Cordelia Hannum, who was the who was the, the, the lady of the house at the time, right. a very formidable character, said, you, you know, you've, you've laid tarmac down, this is our lane, it belongs to the estate and the house, and it always has. And the council um, pulled out some bit of legal stuff and said, so to, to try and claim that it, it was theirs now. And she was absolutely furious because she'd done so much for the town in the past. She, her husband built the hospital, <gasps> She gave allotments to the town, she built the rectory and gave it to the minster, and every time the town, the community needed something, she wrote the check. Right. And this, she was furious that they were treating her like this and basically trying to steal a piece of land off her. Of course. So what she did was she moved the big white gate that was there up to here, built these two stone piers, ah. moved the, the fine Hannam yes. griffins, yep. pressed onto the top, and she never went into town again. <gasps> she went in, she closed all her trade accounts, and she literally refused to, to engage with the community again. The only thing she did do was every Sunday, because she was so devout, was go to the Minster, but she built herself a little walkway over there, a walled walkway, which was her own private one, with a locked gate to get her as she, close as possible to the Minster. So she was furious. Yeah, yeah. But she had because a problem. Because of this, Not right here. Because, because of this. She had a problem, though, because she couldn't get, it, get to the nearest place to go shopping and do business was pool. <laughs> right, yeah. I was about to say, how and did she do her shopping? If, without having to drive all the way around the town to get to Poole, uh, she couldn't get there because the River Allen runs across the land here and is in the way. So she solved that by building that very fine bridge over yes. the Allen and extending the drive 500 yards down to the road to Poole. And then she built a very pretty little lodge, a bungalow lodge, and two more piers like this with very fine wrought iron gates. 
and um, so that she was, that was it. So that was yeah. her exit. She just couldn't. Yeah. She couldn't even yeah. drive through the town. She couldn't Could, bear to have oh, anything to do with them. Extraordinary. The oh. lengths people go to when they're furious. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. but heartbreak yeah. for her. She was a flame-haired lady, right. and she was. Uh, I think she was not to be trifled with. No. No. And here, and so I yeah. presumably there was a huge gate here then. There was a big but, vehicle gate here, and there was a little right. pedestrian gate there, pretty okay. little white gate. Okay. Yeah. But you've um, opened this all up now. No, the court. She was taken to court, or oh. she took the oh counsel to court. And the judge sat there and scratched his head and thought, God, I don't know how to resolve this. Um, so he basically said, you've got to take the gates down, but the ownership of the lane is sort of still in question and we've never really resolved it we since never, then. Right. Yeah. Right. So What's was, the uh, there, was no, there was no judgment. I think she with was, the yellow lines, we can yeah, say the council. Her barrister. <laughs> <Right. Yeah. laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. She, was, she withdrew starts, from yeah. the case. And yeah. I think that, that infuriated her even more because yes. her barrister said, you're probably not going to win. Yeah. Oh my goodness. But then she also, in 1932, built this gorgeous squash court for <gasps> her son, John, who was a mad sportsman. And then she built these two 1930s garages. Uh, and then when we came here 12 years ago, this was all completely derelict. It was and literally overgrown. overgrown. Just a farm gate here and just came in. The, the, the squash court was structurally Lovely. quite sound, but completely derelict on the inside. So then did you have thoughts of yes. what you wanted to do I was by slightly starting to miss my antique shop in Gloucestershire and was saying, <laughs> with my shopkeeper's hat on, saying, this would make a fantastic shop because it's exactly. right on the corner of town. This would make a fantastic shop. So actually, we did quite, we'll take you inside, we yeah. did quite a basic restoration on it. It's wonderful. And then a year later, I kept looking at this 1930s garage. Yes, which uh, was also derelict, is that right? Well, no, 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 you used to get My father had an old Bentley, which yeah. he kept in there. He'd stopped driving it for years and years right. and years, and it was sitting there just sort of rotting away. Right. So, and so oh. in 2013, we turned it into our little cafe. <gasps> Wonderful! Yeah, this is Good morning, Anna. Good morning. Hi, Anna. Anna's Good just morning. set up all the cakes, all the delicious homemade cakes. I think it's brilliant, though, Ali, what you've done, taking this and, you know, really thinking outside the box. Here it was a garage, and you're, you know, this is the contemporary progressive owners of these, you know, historic houses. You're the perfect example of one of them, thinking, like, what can we do with it? Yeah. Yeah. Make it into a cafe. Asset. Use, Use every, every asset. Why tear it down when we can? You know, mm. use it um, for you know to make something like this. Yeah. Can I order a, something hot? Sure. Yeah, of course. Thank, Thank you. you. Can I have a, just a black americano? Yeah, black americano. Yeah, exactly. That's the americano for the American. Yeah. <laughs> you want a piece of cake? Okay. Yeah. I will have one later. Yes, I think I'm going to we'll be back. having some lunch here, so I will definitely yeah. have that. Okay, perfect. Thank you so You're much. much. <laughs> just see you wonderful, later. wonderful to see. See you later. Okay. With her knowledge and background in antiques, Ali has furnished the cafe with such style, echoing the 1930s. So this is our shop. So Hi, Alex. lovely. Hi, this is Julie. Hi, so yes. nice to meet you. So this yes, was so the squash court. This was court. the squash court. Imagine it. That in 1932 was turned it was built yes and it was probably left from i think people often come in here and say oh i played squash in here once it probably from about <laughs> sort of the eight mid 80s 90s onwards right it was um just derelict literally <gasps> everything that could rot had rotted all the wood all the floor yeah the doors the balcony the staircase and it was like a fernery literally it just had sort of plants growing in it which actually looked rather atmospheric right so then you walked we, in we walked in and i thought oh wow <laughs> this would make the most amazing shop so we do candles and we oh. i mean all the tables are for sale and so ali are you doing all the buying then yeah, I do, do? All, I do all the buying, yeah. And I, I try to buy as much locally in Dorset as possible. So little soap makers and candle yes. makers and all the people doing their different trades down here. But also I go to some of the trade fairs in Paris and in London. And then I go to India once a year. Do for you about really? A month. Yeah. <gasps> Wonderful. Um, and what are you sourcing from India? Well, India, it's the scarves and the silks and yes. the lovely rugs. And yeah, I come back, Alex, with all sorts of things, don't we, from India? Yeah. Oh, wonderful. We try to do, um, you know, not everything's very expensive in here. Some things no. you, know, you can just nip in and buy a card. Try to do a mixture. And then I like to say that we've possibly got one of the finest collections of brushes in Dorset. <gasps> I don't want to say that because probably Ooh. someone will say, oh, no, I've got a bigger collection. Oh, okay, but I might have to leave. Yeah, they're quite, I love the, they're quite tactile, all these brushes. Yeah, no, 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 exactly. Yeah. 
Oh, and actually, people this. love them, don't they, Alex? Look at this. Yeah. But clearly, like this one, the hair brush and yes. comb cleaner. Yes. A How hair... could anyone live without one? A hair brush. <laughs> this is perfect for stockings. Yeah. Hair brush and comb cleaner. And the laptop brush. You're running brush. low on them, so I mean, yes. need to get one. And a laptop brush. This is br a veg brush. Mm. What's this one for? That's a beard. A what? beard. No. Yes. It's a, a beard, beard brush. brush. <gasps> What's this then? That laptop. This is another laptop brush. Yeah. This is brilliant. Okay, I might walk out of here. It is um, amazing. There's actually, a how lot people, of brushes. And they buy all these little small, all the time, don't they, Alex? All these little small thin these brushes. Thin brushes mm. and all of these. What's this? That's for Velcro. Oh my gosh, mm, you literally have it, Yeah, we really have got a brush for brush everything. <laughs> well, brilliant. Oh, what, what's this one, my last question? Well, I think this is a little, is this a decorative table to brush oh. the crumbs off your table? And then you'd have a little, is this a decorative hedgehog? I'm gonna get all these brushes. Um, this is brilliant. Um, what wonderful space and wonderful shop. And it's just, a good use for an old squash court, isn't it? Well, it's really wonderful what you've done, mm. Ali, is, you know, coming in to Dean's Court and really putting your mark on this, saying, okay, here's a derelict bu building. Let me do something about this with your background in antiques and buying yeah. and creating a shop for the community yeah. and I couldn't, uh, to enjoy. I couldn't bear the thought of it being pulled down. Thank you so much, Alex. This has been brilliant. And I'll definitely come back and do some um, Christmas shopping, for sure. Some brush shopping. <laughs> Next time, I'll be exploring the hidden depths of Dean's Court. This little piece of wall here is the only exposed bit we've got. So this is the outside of the house that was built in 705 or thereabouts. Oh my goodness. Learning the precise art of fly fishing. Lovely. And fish upstream. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that would make sense. And joining the family for a wonderful organic homegrown feast. James, this is perfectly spiced. I mean, awesome. what you've yeah. cooked. I mean, this is a real feast.